On tonight's breaking bond, an 18 year old man out on bond for murder and aggravated assault violates the condition of his bond at least 37 times. Yet more than a month passes before his bond is even revoked. Fox 26's Randy Wallace joining us live tonight with the latest in his ongoing series. Randy. Yeah, Jonathan. Now, Harris County Pretrial Services is the agency that notifies the courts when a defendant violates bond conditions. Now, that agency wasn't in any rush when it came to murder suspect Corey Hodge. 18 year old Corey Hodge could be a poster guy for breaking bond. This is clearly <laughs> you're breaking your bond conditions. <laughs> On April 17th of last year, police say Hodge shot and killed a 17-year-old man and wounded an 18-year-old at 1455 Lakeside Estates Drive. August 19th, 2021, he was charged with murder and aggravated assault. In October of last year, he had the resources to post a $270,000 bond. But a month later, court documents state he can't afford the monthly fee to obtain a GPS device. Well, the monthly GPS fees aren't that much. So in, that, in other words, he's basically saying he doesn't want to have a GPS on him or he doesn't want to have to pay for it. It was clearly obvious by the documentation he had zero intentions of abiding by any condition of his bond. In addition to a GPS monitor, Hodge was under 24-hour home confinement. You're supposed to be on a GPS. You're supposed to be under 24-hour house arrest. None of that happened. And all of this happened within days and weeks of getting out on bond. In a bond condition violation report, Harris County Pretrial Services tells 176 Criminal District Court Judge Nikita Harmon about 37 times Hodge violated his house arrest. But it took more than a month for anything to happen. If this would have happened in 2015, uh, of the first time he offended, the judge would have surrendered his bond and called him in. They would have had him arrested and brought to court. In a statement, Harris County Pretrial Services tells us, quote, as a practical matter, we make every effort to bring noncompliant defendants into compliance as quickly as possible, including any necessary contact with the defendant. Mr. Hodge was repeatedly advised of his obligations by his pretrial officer. He was also admonished by the judge on April 22nd and was continued on supervision. His further noncompliance resulted in revocation of bond. How many others are out there like this that we don't know about? Now, pretrial services says it has timing requirements that pretrial officers are expected to adhere to when notifying courts of bond violations. But that agency wouldn't give us any specifics. Reporting live from the southwest side, Randy Wallace, Fox 26 News.